Profiles are valuable for about this much. Estimated temperature for a specific nozzle, fan or not, bed temperature. That's it. Uh, we, we get this question all the time, and it, usually it comes down to, okay, look, everybody knows that if you're printing PLA on a normal machine, like a Prusa or a Ender or a Ultimaker or something like that, then you can pretty much print anything. It's gonna come out great. Uh, this kind of applies to ABS, pretty much PETG. PCTG is pretty good. Uh, but once you start getting into the engineering filaments like nylon or polycarbonate or then into the crazy stuff like Ultim or Peak, or you know, now you got semi-crystalline behaviors. So you're not just an amorphous plastic that's relaxed. At, at a certain temperature, it's actually gonna crystallize and change its shape at the molecular level after a certain point. And depending on the geometry and how fast your nozzle is going and what size nozzle it is and how hot you're printing and how hot the chamber is and how hot that layer, how long it's been dwelling on that layer and how much that layer's been able to cool and the previous layers below it, like all these factors come into play. So people ask for a profile to print any part in peak and it doesn't exist. It literally doesn't exist. Profiles are valuable for about this much. Estimated temperature for a specific nozzle, fan or not, bed temperature. That's it. The rest you need to have a sample part, print it with different settings, temperatures, increase the temperature, decrease the temperature, speed, vice versa, to know what works for that specific material. Now, only time profiles work is for PLA. You can download a Prusa PLA profile for this specific material. It'll work. But then, I want to use a 0.6 nozzle. I want to use, PLA is its own creature because it utilizes cooling. So if you're printing carbon fiber nylon with a 0.8 nozzle at 60 millimeters a second, your initial profile is useless because you're going to need to overshoot your temperatures drastically, um, depending on your hot end type. If you have a V6 or a volcano or a mosquito or a mosquito magnum, profile's totally different. There's no simple way to do it. You have to print a piece and experiment. You have to you tune in a material, spend an hour or two printing the little part until it looks better and better. Uh, until you get the result you like, and then realize that that works for a small part. What about a part that's nine inches across? You're going to need to change your temperatures and chamber for that. What about a part that ends in a tip? You're gonna to have to drastically slow down for that depending on the material, or use fan. And so there's no such thing as a profile. That's a recommended starting base, which is basically what's written on the side of the box of the filament you buy. So your prints are directly proportional to how talented you are or skilled or experienced you are with slicing and understanding how the material behaves. So you have to test and fail. On our 22 IDX printer, we printed a intake manifold inlet part and we did it with a huge nozzle. I think it was 0.8 in carbon fiber nylon, high temp carbon fiber nylon and we went through like 27 renditions just to get to the first print, to the main first print, just because we're like, okay, well, what's the flow? How solid is the part once we're flowing at that rate? Because we're using a huge nozzle. We want to go fast. We wanted this for production. It doesn't need to look that pretty. Overhangs, we had to tune in. Okay, we got, the, we got it printing solid. We got good layer adhesion, and then we got uh, okay, now let's see what the overhang behaves like. And oh, we need to go faster, or we need, uh, you know, uh, more extrusion multiplier or higher flow. Um, and there's all these different things where, for a part like this versus a part that's printed like a vase, where it's just an outer outline, are going to be printed totally differently with totally different settings. Um, I mean, not completely different. You're still going to use basically the same temperatures unless you're using a huge nozzle and a fast speed. Then you're going to way overshoot temperatures. Then you need to change your extrusion multiplier to compensate. You need to change retraction distances and speeds. You need to change wipe coast depending on how fast you're printing. Some materials won't be dimensionally accurate with a one millimeter nozzle unless you increase the multiplier by one point 
two, five X multiplier. And guess what? You can't guess that. You have to do it by printing with that nozzle, measuring it, seeing if it, how much bigger or smaller it is, doing the calculations and compensating for it in the print. No printer can do that. You do that. Same with tiny nozzles. Uh, so if you get a 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter nozzle, you're going to have to print maybe faster, but you won't be able to flow as much through that tiny nozzle. It'll reach a limit. So you got to tune totally differently for the tiny nozzle. Um, now, I think the next point would be, OK, so how do you figure it out? Um, what, well, what can you do to assist in the experimentation so you're not just shooting in the dark all the time? Uh, the main thing is you can use Google. Uh, there's tons of guides out there. Simplified 3D has a great guide, all 3DP. Um, there's, there's several. If you look up 3D printing troubleshooting guide on Google, there's new ones popping up. There's forum posts. There's a ton of resources out there where it's like, does your print look like one of these 40 different images? Is this the problem you're having? They're, they're picture guides. Um, and there's, there's like four or five really good ones. We'll put some links in the description down below. Uh, but these are visual guides that will help you determine what's going on and what you need to change. And this will apply to any print with any nozzle and any material almost. Um, gets a little more crazy with the Peak and the Ultim stuff, which is what we specialize in, visionminder.com. Um, but these are how you sort of discover the way to the perfect part, to getting that part dimensionally accurate, to getting that part strong with good layer adhesion, to getting it uh, beautiful and clean and smooth if, you, if that's what you want. Maybe you're going to sand it and print it down, and then you actually don't have to worry about it looking clean and smooth and, and beautiful. Um, so number one, know what you want, what's your end result, and what kind of post-processing are you going to do to it. And number two, just follow the guides. Try and fail, and try again, and fail, and try again. And then eventually you will land on the solution. And usually it'll take, once you got your basic profiles tuned in, then it's like, you know, three or four times maybe, depending. And a huge tip for this that we like to do is actually to um, cut out a small area of the part. Like if you have a big part and there's one area that's just really weird and different like a tiny little spire or like a, a small detail and it's not turning out right you can actually cut your part into different sections and just try that section that part and then tune for that area and apply those settings to that area of the part in Cura or use split processes in Simplify 3D or other methods in Slicer. And there's a bunch of different slicers to use. So we recommend picking one that you can really master and move forward with, but they're all a little bit different. They all have different advantages. Some haven't been updated in years. Some of them are updated every two months with new features because they're community based. Uh, there's a lot of options out there, but whichever one you pick, try to stick with it so that you understand the settings and you can dial in your profiles for your material on your machine because every machine is different, not just every material. Download an XYZ calibration cube and a temperature tower. Figure out how to do variable settings throughout it. Go for the entire temperature range of the part. You'll get accuracy of the extrusion multiplier and so forth, slight overhangs with the XYZ calibration cube. You'll see if it's too hot or you need more retraction or you need to use some fan with the temperature tower. Every time you change nozzle diameter, do it again. Until you get to the point like we do, where every single profile we use to slice something is a PLA profile because we change all the settings on the fly. That's how confident you should be. That's how we get the results we do. You need to know what every setting does. Sit down and look at the question mark next to every setting in Cura and see what it says and see what it does and understand it. That will save you an immense amount of time. And uh, trial and error. Those are small parts. They don't take long to print. Print it too fast. Print it too hot. See what happens. Because in some things like Ultimate well, 10, you'll find, wait, I'm printing this way faster and hotter than I should, and it looks awesome. Well, yeah. That kind of stuff happens, tips and tricks, but yeah. just set aside an hour to print these and uh, learn to troubleshoot them. There are guides everywhere. If they're straying in between the towers, it's too hot or there's not enough retraction, so on and so forth, basic stuff, but print those two things. Uh, we love it when you guys do call, and we do have a broad range of filaments available, engineering stuff, high temp stuff, uh, it really, really cool stuff, and 3D printers, in particular the 22 IDEX, and uh, we've worked with a lot of different printers over the years. We also have 3D scanners, as you can see here on the wall, so we're really focused on engineering high-end 
aerospace, medical, oil and gas type applications. And if that's you, definitely give us a call. We're here to help you figure out what the right solution is. And uh, yeah, leave the comments down below. Let us know if you got any questions or if you need any other resources. We love answering these types of questions and this is something we get all the time. So we wanted to help out and answer this for you guys. And uh, let us know what you think down in the comments below. And um, oh my God. T -t -t TDS. Yes. Oh, Don't call us TDS. until you look up the TDS. Yeah. It'll tell you yeah. the temperature, recommended yep. speed, settings. It's on their website. We don't have it. Yep. It's on their website. We don't make filament. Go there, look at we that first. Don't website. ask us how hot it is because it's on the TDS. Look at that. Right. Don't leave it out because it'll say, don't leave it out. It's super hygroscopic. So, yeah. you know. You have to dry your filament. Sometimes problems are because you haven't dried your filament. It's got moisture inside it absorbed from the air, and that will cause all kinds of problems. There's a bunch of different problems. So really do your research, really look into it. Um, God, anything else? I think else PLA and ABS are the only materials where you can look at the settings on the side of the box and know what to do. Everything else requires yeah. a TDS. Pretty much, pretty much. And with just about any printer, PLA, ABS, PETG, uh, most of the time. You do gotta dry that stuff, by the way. PET, yeah, it's a lie. They, uh, remember yeah, back in the day, they were like, oh, it's don't worry about water. PETG is yeah. awful unless yeah. it's bone dry. Really chemically resistant too. It's actually kind of an industrial material when you think about it. Uh, but anyway, lots of options. This video could go on forever. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see. Hit that like button on this video. It helps us keep doing what we do and we love you for it. Send Bitcoins to the address below. Love you guys, thank you. Thank you for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.